Hello everyone, I am Bets Golden. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited about today's project. I actually have been inspired by um, Simon Hurley and I'm gonna be using his inks to do this as well as some of the Ranger products, but I'm going to be using this really awesome pet stamp from Sassy and Crafty. And I've already taken uh, this little one and colored her in. I'm not gonna be using this on this project, but I just wanted you to see how cute these stamps are. They are just absolutely adorable adorable but I am going to be using this little guy as well as this sentiment so what we're going to do is it's an embossing resist technique and this is kind of like the lazy man's way to do a masking on the front of a card so right in in here in my misty I have um the specialty stamping paper by Ranger it comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets, and I think that there's 10 sheets. I just cut them into fourths because that's the perfect A2 card uh, front. When, and then what I do is I cut it down from there. So uh, this is actually 5.25 by four, and it's gonna fit perfectly on a um, card front. I'm going to go ahead first and just take my static, because I'm gonna be doing some embossing on this, and I'm gonna run my static powder over, just because I really wanna make sure I get a good crisp image. I'm gonna be using, um, actually not the clear embossing on this one, the black powder embossing on this, and I like to emboss with uh, VersaFine Claire pigment ink. I just think that it does a really nice job of doing good coverage. So I'm just gonna ink up my stamp and sentiment. I'm just gonna knock it all out at one time, and then I'm going to emboss both of them with the black. So I just like to do this, and if I don't get a great coverage or image it's okay because I can put it back down but I did get a very nice coverage on this so I can go ahead take this on out of my misty I'm going to be done with the misty for this particular project so I can set that aside and then I'm just going to add on my um, embossing powder like so, and then if any of it gets in places that I don't want it to be in, I can go ahead and um, take a soft bristle brush and just brush those grains away because I really only want the black to stick to the black ink. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for now, and then I'm just gonna go ahead, take my embossing, my heat gun, and emboss it. The image as well as the sentiment is embossed, and you know that it's embossed when it shines all over the place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go in with my Distress Glaze. I'm going to color his tongue Fired Brick, as well as his scarf in Broken China. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take my um, Distress Embossing Pins. All this is, is it's just the embossing ink in a pin form. So it's super easy to get um, precision if you're in a tight spot. So I'm gonna do the tongue first. And it's important, again, I am gonna be relying on this static pouch that I do that, and so all you have to do is I'm just gonna go in, actually, um, I think I'm gonna go in with a bullet on this one, and I'm just going to go all over the little tongue, like so, make sure I get everything covered in there. I don't want any of this to, um, you know, I, I don't wanna miss any of it. And the embossing uh, pins, the Distress pins, they don't last forever. So you really wanna make sure that you, they give you enough time, but it's not something that you can walk away from and then come back. It will eventually dry out. Then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just heat set this. And so that is totally colored and ready. And the reason why they call this embossing a distress embossing glaze 
is because it is a glaze. There is a transparency to it. You can kind of see through it, so it gives a hint of color. However, with what I'm doing, it is absolutely perfect. But if you wanted um, to give a full coverage in which that little black speck on the tongue will be covered, you could go ahead and use this with just some straight up embossing powder and it would give you the same effect. And so from here, I'm going to add in my broken china again. I'm just gonna take this and I'm just going to make sure that I put some of that powder down. I'm gonna use the bullet tip on this and I'm just going to make sure that I give a nice coverage. Now my tip, I did use over some ink that was not completely um, dry and set so it is there is you can see that black glaze that doesn't bother me but um if that's something that would bother you be definitely more careful than i am because <laughs> clearly i was not very careful so i'm just going to go ahead and pour over the broken um uh, the broken china and again I got it just where I wanted it because I ran that static foam pad over it so I'm going to set this Alright, so that needs to cool a minute before we can move on to our next step. So our next step, I'm going to actually cover the whole thing with embossing. I'm going to emboss the entire image. What that's going to do is it's going to make it super pretty and glossy. And it also is going to allow me to throw some ink down on this and get some color going without having to mask the whole thing. So it's kind of cool. All right, so again, I'm going to take the, I'm gonna use clear embossing powder this time, and I'm gonna use my brush tip, but before I do that, you know what I gotta do. I gotta kind of go around and just make sure that I don't have any excess moisture around the edges of this image because I really want to make sure that it only um, picks up, it only will uh, only emboss him. I don't want anything else embossed. And again, I'm totally okay with the fact that, you know, I have some, I, I'm spreading some black here. It actually is kind of helping me because it's gonna show me where I need to go back over perhaps and um, hit another spot if I miss any of any of of the of his face or his body because I want to get the whole thing embossed. And even if he has a gray, I'm cool with that. I think that's kind of cool, you know? And if you wanted your, your dog to be a particular color, you could definitely color it in you and do a colored emboss on it or another glaze on top of this. The nice thing about the glazes is they do lay nicely on top of each other, as you can tell, because what I did there. Okay, so I think I have pretty good coverage on this. I'm not seeing any white area. Again, that's one good thing that my tip has been contaminated, but I probably do wanna go ahead and um, purchase another one that's clean. Have one that has a tint on it, one that's clean. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just emboss this all over in a clear embossing. And I can go right over the section that I did with the glaze because this is clear. So even, even if there was like, it's not going to, even if it did adhere, it's not going to ruin that color because it's clear. It's a clear embossing powder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tap him off. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat set him.
right, so my little dude is totally, totally covered in clear embossing. I do wanna let this sit for a minute. I do need to let him cool because I am going to be adding some ink on top of him and I'm just gonna do a play with ink. And the reason why I have decided to use the Simon Hurley inks on this technique is, well, first of all, I saw him demonstrate it. So this is entirely, um, I, I've been inspired by Simon Hurley. So please make sure that you go over and you check out his original video. It is up on YouTube. Um, he makes two cards doing the same technique with his inks and his stamps. Um, but I also like because, you know, usually when you are dealing with a um, pigment that you can mix, you have to be super respectful of a color family. And for some reason with his inks, um, they tend to blend fairly well. You don't get that real muddy look and I don't really know why because um, it is a, uh, it is a, a water soluble ink like you can put water on top of it so this is pretty much cool to the touch which is what I needed and if you guys have a silicone mat this mat is awesome you guys it's my very favorite one um Swiffers on this will take away all your little um like your glitter and your embossing powder because everything sticks to it and a Swiffer works really well on it all right so from here I'm going to start to lay out um some of my ink and I'm just gonna take my blending tool and I'm just gonna start kind of on the outside and work my way around so I'm gonna start with some psych first and then I'm just going to blend this through maybe add a little bit down there and then from here um, let's do some Guppy, which is a really pretty orange. And I'm gonna actually wipe off um, him. So the, the color is really going to pop kind of nicely um, around him because I, he, there is some ink on him, but since it's embossed, it's gonna, it's gonna act as a resist. So I can go ahead in with my wipes when I'm done. And I'm gonna take a wipe out right now because I don't want it completely, it's pretty wet, so I wanna just let that dry a little bit. And then I wanna go in, let's take some bee sting. Let's go in with some bee sting. And uh, just going to add some of that, blend it into the guppy. so and then I want to take some of my clear sky and just blend that on through and I did have some later gator out but I think I might be okay with just this mix right here I really really like this little mix and then from here I can take a stencil and just go in again my stencil and it adds just a little bit of interest so I'm just gonna go over it with the colors that I used in those spots so this is some bee sting and since it's a buildable type it's a buildable color um, it just adds a little bit extra interest. It doesn't, you know, you can see it pop still, which is what, which is what I want. All right, and then go with a little bit of guppy. Pretty cute. And then I'm just gonna take and wipe away my ink that may have fallen, I may have gotten on my um, my little dog. And there we go. That Now we have a really, 
really cute card base, a card front that is just freaking adorable. Um, I do want to go around and ink the edges, so I'm going to pull out archival ink for this. And I think I'm going to use just um, the Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm just going to ink. And the reason why I'm doing the archival is because it will hold to the embossing. Uh, it's a permanent waterproof ink. It has to set up a little bit, of course, because it is a slick surface, but it will it will uh, not move on that embossed area. And then all you have to do from here is just place him on your card front. I'm a big Nouveau Drop fan, you know, so I was thinking maybe I'll put Nouveau Drops on it, but I mean, looking at that, that's pretty stinking cute. I might add them at the end. I don't know. But um, I don't have to use my liquid adhesive on this since the, the, the paper weight on this um, specialty paper is not super thick. So I can just use a tape runner and it's going to adhere nicely. I always, always add my front with my card base open because that allows for it to lay flat with no bounce. And then I can get a better even, uh, I can get it adhered nicely without it being cockeye. All right, so there you go. That is how you can create a card using your embossing powders as a resist. How fun is that? Okay, if you guys are interested in any of the products that I used, make sure you check out my link down below because I do have them listed for you. And um, it is affiliated. And all that means is that I get a small commission off of whatever you make at no additional cost to you. And I just turn it around and put it back into my channel so I can bring you guys more content. The Sassy and Crafty is not an affiliated link, but I will have that provided for you down below at, for your convenience so that you can check out their really cute stamps. Another stamp set that they have in addition to the pet one that I love is this one. And I do have some things that have been up on my channel Channel utilizing these images. So make sure you go and check them out as well. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope that you do so. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And um, if you enjoyed this video, please share it. That does help me out tremendously. And also make sure you're following me over on Instagram if you're there, because I do share a lot of my final projects as well as the behind the scenes. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.